What are you without identity? What are you without language? What are you without a story that tells where you come from? What are you if you can't remember, but you know something's there? It's a scary thought to not know. It can't always be easy. You know, there's that physical labor and toil that goes into into this in, into this work. We're not just extracting things from the land. We're also putting um, our our love and care back into it through our through our traditional practices. The things that we're taught, you know, growing up, um, that means songs, stories. So even before I even actually had real life experience planting, I was. I grew up hearing stories about the tepper beans. Um, to us, the tepper beans are the stars in the sky. They're the Thalmak Thalnadek, or the Milky Way. And so having those images in my head and those teachings um, definitely play a role in how we treat the seeds. My grandfather, he would tell me things like, talk to them, talk to the plants, tell them good things, you know? And when I was a little kid, like, no, oh, that sounds silly. Like, I would never do that. But as I got older and trying to think of him in these moments when I'm planting or checking on things or pulling weeds, I think about him a lot. And those, those things come to mind, the things he's told me. And I just think, wow, you were right. Because <laughs> once you do that and you see and you feel and you're exchanging energy from these plants, it's it's a feeling, it's a sensation of like a, that connection. I guess what we, we hold to be a connection of, of a type that is felt and a vibration that is exchanged between um, a living being. Those food crops are integral to the culture, to the food ways, to the life ways, to every aspect of being. It's, it's beyond just a botanical and conservation issue. It's a cultural issue, it's an identity issue. So the 60-day corn is an autumn heritage crop. It's a beloved crop by not only Thalma Autumn, but everybody who, who experiences it. This is a very fast maturing desert adapted corn. It reaches milk stage, so, so it's consumable within 60 days after planting. It's a part of a, an ability to survive and an ability to continue on surviving until it's time to, to bring in the crops again. These are crops that over hundreds of years have adapted to the high heat, to the less water of this region. Well, those are things that scientists are saying are only going to increase, right? Or things that we're dealing with now already, higher temperatures in the summer, less water availability. This is a global issue. We're not just saving these crops so we can have beans to eat when things get tough, but we're saving these and hoping more people grow them and, and you know, the, the value of them. To those whose ancestors created these crops, my understanding is that's what's in, the important part is, is that it's the, the identity part of it. So we're here at Tumacacari National Historical Park. Right now we're standing in the beautiful church, the Adobe Church, that was built in the 1800s and was part of a congregation until 1848. With the arrival of the missionaries, uh, in particular Father Kino in 1691, they had everything from their home country. Herbs to cook with, culinary herbs, but one of the most important crops that they brought with them that really changed, I would say all of North America, was wheat. They brought wheat and why wheat was so important is when the autumn were planting corn, beans and squash, corn, we're here in the desert and corn is a food that grows in the summertime when the rains fall and it needs a certain temperature but it's not going to grow in the winter time. And when the Spanish introduced the wheat, it was perfect to really expand everybody's table with so much more food. You know, this crop really has an amazing story and I had a chance to make bread 
first time I made bread with it, I instantly realized this is a future, this is really um, bigger than any one person, that we have a chance to revive this crop and make it into a food, a delicious bread that can be enjoyed by you know, everyone in this region and really share the efforts with everyone involved. Kind of going back to the past and discovering these seeds that were planted here before and having small scale farming of these grains that really have a true expression of flavor, but also a taste of the place. And that is also involves that narrative of talking about the cultural identity and the pathways and the sharing of food between the missionaries and the indigenous people of the region. This is really my mission and vision is to bring back this and share it with other people. I think it's the greatest gift that our ancestors have given to us, the tradition and the culture and my identity because that's who I am. We're eating the same food as they ate and you know it, it keeps us connected to our, our tradition, to our roots. To, to our elders and you know it's also something that's going to connect our future generations to us. I always want us to remember what we know, the intimate relationships we have with the land. We are people of the desert, we are Thanaatham, we are people with our own story and significance to this place. We bring balance to, to nature, that's our identity. Tapo. <laughs>